Welcome back to Berm Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different, but kind of the same. We're actually doing another Mountain Bike 101 video. We already went over terminology, etiquette, and very basic mountain bike techniques. Today, we're gonna to be talking about being prepared for your ride. So before we get into any specifics, we have to talk about how you're gonna carry your stuff. Now, one method of carrying things that everybody's familiar with is a backpack or a hydration pack in this case. Camelback makes them, but a lot of companies make them and they all feature a bladder inside that you can fill with lots and lots of water. Now, the advantage of a hydration pack is that not only does it hold lots of stuff, but you can also drink very conveniently while you're on your bike. You don't have to get off your bike. You don't have to reach down for a bottle. You just reach over, put the tube in your mouth and take a sip. For this reason, they're very, very popular. Now, if you're going on a long ride, you need to carry lots of provisions and lots of water and maybe even some camera gear. This is kind of a no brainer because in terms of storage and convenience and overall functionality, it's hard to beat. But a lot of riders, including myself, only use a hydration pack if there's no other option. Consider the footprint it puts on your body. It makes you a lot warmer. It also adds weight to your back and you can feel it and it's just not as comfortable to ride with one. Some people aren't bothered by it, but if I'm going on a short ride, I look to other options to try and lessen the load on myself. So one rung down from a backpack is a lumbar pack or hip pack, pretty much a fanny pack. Now, there are tons of advantages to a fanny pack. First of all, it doesn't cover nearly as much of your body, it doesn't make you as hot, and it's very comfortable. It also still holds a pretty good amount of stuff, and many of these are available with bladders, much like a hydration pack. Some can hold a water bottle or even multiple water bottles on the side. And what's nice about that is you have all your weight really down low. One of my favorite advantages to a lumbar pack is the ease of access. You can just loosen it up, flip it around to the front, and just reach down and grab whatever you need. Now, the disadvantages to a lumbar pack are, first of all, it is limited on storage when compared to a backpack, and also some people find that they bounce around a little bit. It also is another thing that you're wearing, just like the backpack, and so it will make you a little bit hotter and a little less comfortable. But many riders find that this is a happy medium. So depending on what type of riding you're gonna be doing, you might not need any of that. After all, you can carry quite a bit of stuff right on your person. In my left pocket here, I have my cell phone, which is great for emergencies or navigation. I have multi-tool right here, which can perform many different repairs on the bike. And actually, stuff back here, I've got a water bottle. If you're hitting local dirt jumps, smashing out some bike park laps, or just going for a loop close to home, this might be all you need. But there are other ways to carry your gear besides jamming a water bottle in your underwear or loading your pockets with stuff. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the water bottle and the water bottle cage. This will hold enough to get you through a couple of hours of riding depending on the weather. As for tools, as I showed, you can put a multi-tool in your pocket, but also there are ways to stash them on your bike. Here are my steer tube. I have a chain tool, multiple Allen keys, and different types of wrenches I would need on my bike. On my other bike, I use this, which is just a pack that straps to your frame and has everything you need inside of it, including an inner tube, a tire inflator, CO2 cartridges, and even a set of wipes for a different type of emergency altogether. Hello. I personally find that when on a long ride, calorie dense foods are a really good thing to bring with you because they don't take up a lot of space and they're gonna give you the energy you need to get through the day. So peanut butter jelly sandwiches, trail mix, and of course, energy bars, energy chews. I think at the most basic level, we don't have to geek out over nutrition. Just bring some food so you don't zonk out and crash. You also need to perform common repairs that happen out on the trail. Most common is gonna be a flat tire. No matter what type of tire setup you're running on your bike, after you repair a flat, you're gonna to need to inflate it. Now, obviously you can do this with a bike pump, but if you've ever used a hand pump to inflate a tire out on the trails, you know it is not fun. And if you're really trying to go minimalist, it's gonna be a lot easier to bring some CO2 with you. This is a CO2 cartridge and this is an inflator. To use it, you screw the cartridge in here, and then you push this onto your bike tire. Now, the advantage of CO2 is that it's really, really small and compact. It's also really, really easy. It can inflate your tire in just a few seconds. 
Now the disadvantage to CO2 is first of all, it's a consumable. So if you deplete your CO2 cartridge, you can't inflate something again. Whereas if you bring a pump, it's always gonna be there and it's always gonna work. Now from what I've seen amongst my friends, about a third of people bring CO2 with them, a third bring a pump, and the other third bring nothing at all and rely on others to fix their tire. Now a higher end bike is gonna have tubeless tires. So there's no inner tube inside of it in the first place. You have sealant. When the tire gets punctured, the sealant flows to the hole and kind of repairs the flat on the go but other times the hole will be so big that the sealant cannot repair the flat. In that case, you're gonna need a tubeless repair kit. Now, my tubeless repair kit fits here right next to my water bottle cage. And then inside of this canister is everything you need to repair a flat. It comes with a CO2 inflator, tire plugs, and a plug applicator. Now, if you have tubeless tires, a tubeless repair kit's gonna get you out of nine out of 10 flats, and it's gonna do it fast. But I still carry an inner tube because sometimes it just doesn't cut it. So if you're not sure what to bring, just bring an inner tube, strap it to your frame or throw it in your bag and you'll be able to get home no matter what. So I mentioned it earlier, you gotta have a multi-tool on you. You're gonna need a multi-tool to make adjustments on your bike, get things back into place, or just make all the in-between repairs. Multi-tools in general are so small that it doesn't make sense to not have one. Now a good multi-tool is gonna have a whole bunch of different size hex keys and it's gonna have a chain tool. This stowaway multi-tool even has a tire lever and a spare master link inside of it. Great example of when you need a multi-tool. You crash, you get up, you're okay, but you look down on your bike and your bars are completely misaligned from your front wheel. Now what a lot of people do is they put their front wheel between their legs and they force the handlebars back into place. Not a good thing to do, don't, don't do that. It's really easy to just fix it with a multi-tool. What you're gonna do is just loosen these two pinch bolts a little bit on the side of your stem. Now your bars are gonna move freely. So you just line them up by eye and retighten the pinch bolts. Very easy and you don't have to scrape the inside of your stem on your steer tube. So let's say you snap your chain, which happens more often than you might think. Well, if you were prepared enough to bring a multi-tool and a spare quick link, you can fix it right there on the trail. Now, most chains can be shortened by a link or two and you can still operate your bike. Just use your multi-tool to remove the damaged outer link so that you have two inside links. Then put your chain back together with your quick link. We're talking about carrying something that can fit in your pocket and something this big to repair a very common thing that will happen out on the trails. And it can mean the difference of you pushing your bike home or pedaling home. Now in 2021, one of the most important things you can bring with you on your ride is your cell phone. But of course, sometimes you're not gonna have cell phone reception. So if there is some kind of an emergency, you're not gonna be able to contact anyone. But you can figure out where you are. Now I've mentioned Trail Forks before. It's a GPS mapping app for mountain bike riding and there are several apps just like it. But if you don't have reception, you can't bring up the maps. So oftentimes there's an option to download the map before you go out. This is something I highly recommend you do because if you know where you are and you can find your way around, there's far less of a chance you're gonna get lost, run out of food or water, or get yourself into a situation that you weren't prepared for. If you're going out into the boonies and you're not gonna have cell phone reception, maybe it would be a good idea to have a first aid kit and know how to use it. Now, as I said, if you do get into an emergency situation, your cell phone is very useful, but only if you can tell an emergency responder where you are. For that, you can use almost any mapping app, including Google Maps. So first, press a location button and get your location. Then zoom in and drop a pin where you are. Once you drop the pin, you're gonna be able to look at your latitude and longitude. If you give your latitude and longitude to first responders, they can at least pull up your location on a map and know somewhat where you are. And if somebody passes you on the trail and they're gonna go and get help, giving them your latitude and longitude would probably be a good idea. Now, if you're stranded somewhere and you don't have any cell phone reception and you're all alone, but your cell phone has battery, at least you can use the camera in your cell phone to document the situation so that if you survive, you can make a viral YouTube video that will help pay for the helicopter and first responders um, that you're gonna get charged for seriously if you live in the United States. Ow! So to recap, decide what method you're gonna use to carry your stuff, be it a backpack, a lumbar pack, or strapping it to your bike and yourself. Make sure you bring water, food, a way to repair a flat, 
and a multi-tool, and it's especially good to be prepared for an emergency situation. This video is meant to be food for thought, just to give you a really broad overview of how to be prepared for a mountain bike ride. If you found this video useful, check the playlist below where we have other videos in our Mountain Bike 101 series. So be prepared, always let somebody know where you're going, and if not, make sure you have a friend with you that is prepared so you can bum stuff off them. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. This is a first aid kit, and you should... <laughs> <laughs> He's such an asshole. Okay. This. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>